Quando si finisce di costruire una barca, ci si rende sempre conto When you finish building a boat, you always realize what could have been done better, and so you begin a new, better design. But then comes new ideas, technology is always progressing, and in the end, you must always start over. That is exactly what Ferretti is doing. Why? Because like this, they continue to improve always more and more quickly. This is the Ferretti 700 and is a preview of the boat show. As all the Ferretti, this is a flying bridge sport. The shipyard would not build a boat that was too high in relation to its length and width because it would reduce its stability. And this model, it seems to me, is more sporty than others. It has been designed by the Zucconi International Project and the Ferretti Group Engineering Department. And other than showcasing the aesthetic solutions that categorise the future of this brand, it can satisfy different housing needs, thanks to the two different layouts for the space dedicated to the guests. The deck house is light, not only because of the construction methods, but also because of the style. This long window that runs from bow to stern reduces the visual impact of the fiberglass. They have also lowered the gunwale in way of the windows in the salon, bringing more light and better views to the room. Exiting the port of Cannes during the day of the yachting festival is especially complicated due to the high density of vessels in the water. In this boat, however, you can manoeuvre easily because of the very powerful bow thruster and, in addition, you can also ask for another thruster at the stern. If thrusters are effective, well, for the skipper, it is much easier to dock. Also the fact that the superstructure is not high and that the profile is slim. It reduces the impact of the wind and thus facilitates the mooring. On this model, we have two MAN V8 1200 horsepower engines, but the unit can also be sold with 1000 horsepower engines, also MAN. Right now, we are in displacement. The engines are idling at 600 RPM. Fuel consumption is 9 litres an hour, and our speed is 6.5 knots. This means that to go a mile, we need just 1.4 litres, and we have 2,400 horsepower. In my opinion, this is a very good result. Until a few years ago, it was just a dream to navigate at this pace with this level of acoustic comfort, about 55 dBA, thanks to the building technology and the new engines. Now, however, we take the boat from displacement to start planing. The steering position is located well forward and this gives a sensation of special contact with the sea. The waves can be seen very clearly. Not only waves, of course, but also any obstacle that might be in front of us. The engines are completely automated, but a good skipper always uses a dedicated touch on the throttle to offer a comfortable experience for all the guests. I have increased the speed, gently, and we have reached 1,450 RPM. Speed is now 15 knots and we are planing. The angle of incidence, of course, is increased, but that is for better efficiency. The view is perfect, not only on the horizon, but also just in front of the bow. 15 knots can already be considered a good cruising speed for a boat of this size. And consumption, at the moment, it is 140 litres an hour. This model has the more powerful engines. 2,400 horsepower is quite a lot, and you feel it. You feel it especially now that we've gone from 15 to 20 knots. The thrust is almost overpowering. This, however, is very enjoyable. It's enjoyable to feel that you have so much power available and the engines so reactive. 
I'd push the engines to 1,950 RPM and we are still in cruising speed. The speed increased to 25 knots and the consumption is 280 litres an hour. In this moment, the tanks are completely full, those for fuel and those for water. And we should take this information into account because I'm going to push the boat to maximum speed. The whole time, I haven't needed to operate the flaps. This is also an important point. It gives you an idea of how well the boat sits in the water. The weight distribution is optimal and also the hydrodynamic force that acts on the hull as the speed changes does not affect the angle of incidence. Here we are. We are at our maximum 32.7 knots with the engines turning at 2,370 RPM. 32.7 knots. That's one knot faster than the shipyard rated. And with all the tanks full. Now, how about if we go full speed? Fast, 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 like this. The engine responds quickly, and this, I believe, is a very steep turn. Now let's watch. The steering is great on this boat. It responds well to all of the manoeuvring I do at the wheel. I like it. And voila! I have left the wheel and it has returned to the central position. The rudder is at centre and we are on course again. This is also very convenient. It is a feature developed by the Ferretti Group. In this sea condition, there are certainly no problems for the Ferretti 700. But for the hull and structure, there would be no problems even if the sea was agitated, because this boat is certified CEA. Now we head back to Cannes. We'll stop between two islands where the water is calm and I'll show you the boat. The aft area has all the innovations of the last Ferretti yacht. The swim platform with integrated tender lift comes down diagonally about a metre below the water. The size of the platform allows you to bring on a tender of 385 centimetres. Yachts must also be practical to use. That's why they made these two storage compartments, one at the level of the swim platform and the other behind the aft sofa. In the cockpit, there's a long sofa and in the front, there's a large fixed teak table that seats eight. On the starboard side, there's access for the crew quarters. The flybridge is a fully furnished terrace, sun deck and living area, and a kitchen cabinet can tailor your needs. The Bermini top protects the entire surface from the sun. Alternatively, as on this model, a hard top with an awning can be installed. On the bow, there's the traditional sun deck. The side door is a must on any yacht of this size. The sliding glass door with a steel frame leads to the lounge, where it is impossible not to be captivated by the sheer size of the space, open on each side towards the sea. This space is without barriers, but each area has its own function. Living area, dining area and control space. The living area is furnished with two sofas and a coffee table. The dining area is characterised by a large kitchen that is equipped with various cabinets, including those for glassware. The counter is extended by a peninsula that can be used as a bar. 
The countertop colour leather is made from the innovative, sustainable material paper stone. The dining table is extended and has a glass top. It is surrounded by an L-shaped sofa. A portion of the wheelhouse opens to a staircase that leads below deck. The real feature that characterises the world of Ferretti yachts is the possibility of having two different layouts, as with this Ferretti 700. The reason is obvious. Yachts are increasingly global, and Ferretti builds them in Italy, but exports them worldwide. The differences between the two layouts are relevant, only the common areas and guest cabins, while the VIP and the master suites remain the same. The master suite, amidships, is very spacious. The windows are decorated with frames that emphasise their design. There are walk-in closets and a bathroom with a beautiful shower space. For her, there is this vanity area, and for both, a love seat. The VIP guests are housed in the bow, in a cabin of the same style, with a queen-size bed and a private bathroom with separate shower. This is a two-cabins layout with twin beds. The three-cabin layout instead features a guest cabin with a queen-size bed, convertible into two twin beds. The cabins located amidships share a large bathroom. In way of the fourth cabin, it's possible to set up a lounge, lit by a window and two portholes. The innovation is not only what the eye can see, but also in the materials, the technologies, the ship systems. And so a new model is not better just because it's more modern, but because it's the result of a development program. That, in a large company like the Ferretti Group, is implemented on many different models and by many highly specialised people that can share their ideas and experiences to always improve the outcome.